7 Mindfulness Strategies to Cope with Loss There's no right way to grieve, but there are ways to support the grieving process. Mindfulness as a practice, paying attention to what's happening as it's happening, is actually really helpful inside of grief. A 2018 study trusted source involving an eight-week mindfulness-based cognitive therapy intervention in grieving individuals showed significant improvements, both in executive control and emotional regulation. This was measured by self-reporting questionnaires and functional magnetic resonance imaging. A 2020 study found that mindfulness as a trait predicted higher rates of post-traumatic growth for individuals who experienced traumatic grief. Researchers noted that mindfulness therapies may be specifically effective at helping family members process the drawn-out grief that comes from caring for a loved one in mental decline. Still, larger studies are needed. According to Devine, there are seven steps that can help you cope with grief mindfully. 1. Acknowledge and accept your feelings. While it might not be easy, accepting how you feel is the first step to healing and the most essential in the process of mindful grieving. By allowing yourself to feel what you feel without judgment, you stop resisting your emotions. That means you can stop fighting what you feel. You also start to understand that grief is not a linear path with nice boxes to tick off. Rather, it's a cycle. It may come in waves, ebbing and flowing without explanation. By understanding that, you can start to see that grief comes and goes. It becomes much easier to handle your feelings knowing that, eventually, they will pass. 2. Express yourself. Once you accept your feelings, you can give them a healthy outlet. This can include writing or journaling, art making, exercising, talking and sharing, dancing, gardening, volunteering, cooking or baking, listening to or playing music. While some individuals find relief by talking through their feelings, others don't. It's helpful to find a way to express your emotions so they don't get stuck. No matter which method speaks to you, self-expression is an important part of the grieving process. 3. Know you're not alone. Grief can be a lonely place. Whether every thought is consumed with your loss or it comes and goes, the truth is you're never alone in your grief. Grief is a universal experience. If you can use mindfulness to be aware of your feelings, you can also be aware that you're not alone in these feelings or your grieving process. You may even consider finding a grief support group through a bereavement resource guide, like the one compiled by a Luna Network. 4. Try grief-focused meditation. In theory, meditation is the simplest thing in the world. In practice, especially during times of loss, meditation may seem like an impossible task. Sitting with only your thoughts and emotions can be overwhelming. With practice, meditation can create a structured space to allow yourself to just be, feel, and accept. This creates a safe environment for your pain to simply exist, without resistance. 5. Create healthy boundaries. When you're grieving, well-meaning friends and acquaintances may want to step in to help. While their hearts may be in the right place, it might not be what you need. Devine explains that you can communicate your needs and set healthy boundaries. The way you do so, she says, may depend on your relationship with the person you're setting boundaries with. It can be difficult to ask for what you need, but a simple request can go a long way toward helping you feel supported and understood in your grief. 6. Get unstuck. There are a lot of ideas about what grief should look like. Because of this, Devine notes that you can sometimes feel like you're stuck in your grief. This means that you may be holding yourself to false expectations of how to grieve correctly. When it comes to grief, there's no finish line. While grief may come and go, the loss remains. If you still get teary-eyed when someone you've lost comes up in conversation or in your thoughts years later, 
it doesn't mean you're stuck. In fact, this may be a healthy expression of your continued love and appreciation for that person. Things like changes in appetite and sleep disturbances can make surviving grief even harder. While it doesn't mean you're stuck, some normal grief responses can negatively affect your life. If you're not sleeping well because you're having nightmares, it might be time to research ways to improve your sleep or seek out a professional. While it's normal to lose interest in work, hobbies, or even friendships you enjoyed before your loss, it's important to maintain social connections where you can. It's that long-term inability to tell the truth about loss that truly makes a person stuck in their grief. 7. Start telling your story. Though it doesn't need to happen right away, Devine strongly suggests sharing your own story with grief. Speaking your truth about what happened and what your grieving process looks like can be incredibly powerful. In telling the truth about your own experience, that is how things change, Devine says. Stories are at the root of grassroots movements, and grassroots movements change things. Find places to tell the truth about your grief, and be ferocious about your rights to feel supported and honored in your own loss. Sharing your story not only honors your grief process. It honors the memory of your loved one as well. Takeaway when approached in a healthy way, mindfulness can help you cope with loss and grief with grace, acceptance, and surrender. Simply knowing that it's okay to feel whatever you're feeling is the first step. While grief is never easy, taking steps to be with the process can ease the hardship of bearing a loss. It can also remind you that you're not alone in this most human of experiences. If you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up, also subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any of our intriguing videos. Thanks for watching.